Hello, uh, this is the uh, first uh, practical video in the video series uh, that we have on web forms. And uh, in the objective for this uh, uh, first video is to learn how to develop, how to actually develop a simple web form. In the previous video, we introduced the general objectives uh, of the series. And in this one, we're actually going to develop a simple web form. Now, uh, before we uh, go through the practical stuff, uh, I want to address the question of why. Why should we have web forms? Well, the answer, I think, is uh, straightforward. So it's to get uh, the user's input and uh, do something with that information. And I think the overall objective is to create an interactive experience uh, on the web. Now, the video is going to go through the form basics and how to get uh, a text input from the user. The tags that we're going to uh, work with is the form tag, the input tag, and uh, the label tag. Now, a general uh, useful uh, resource is uh, again to be found in uh, W3Schools. You can see the link uh, on the bottom of the uh, slide. Now, before we actually code some terms that we're, I'm going to use uh, in the in this uh, video series. And the first term is uh, the form fields. And by form fields, we mean any uh, fields that the user uh, can actually insert information. So, for example, in this screenshot of, a sub of this uh, submission su subscription form, uh, the, there is one form field, and that is uh, to get the first name of the user. Now, a more uh, realistic example is seen in this subscription form here uh, in this screenshot where we have several form fields. So the form field, uh, the first form field is again uh, is going to get the user's first name. The second one, the user's last name. The third one uh, is the third form field is to get the user's uh, gender and so forth and so on. So we have several form fields in this example. Now, some other terms that you should be uh, actually aware of, since you need to have some backup on HTML, that I'm going to use in this series of videos is the term of the tag, or also known as element. So I'm going to interchangeably use those two terms. So we have tags or elements. Those tags have one or more attributes, and the attributes have values. Now, in this example, so the, the first tag uh, to be seen in this example is the form tag. And the first attribute of the form tag is the action attribute. And this one has as value page to handle the form.php. The second attribute of the form tag is the method attribute. And it has as value post. And the third and final attribute in this example of the form tag is the attribute ID and it has as value uh, user data. So it's also important to remind you that in HTML, uh, values are either predefined or of your choice. So for example, the, here the attribute method expects predefined values. So as we're going to see, it's either the value of get or post that it expects. Whereas the attributes of ID and action is up to you. So it's of your choice. How do you name? What value, I should say, do you give to the attribute ID? It should be unique in the page, but again, it's it's of your choice. So in this case, I have uh, given the value to the ID attribute user data with a capital D. This is known also, also as a camel case. Now, the basics of the form tag, so the basic attributes of the form is the action. So you always need to have an action attribute and you always need to have a form tag if you want to actually develop a web form. Now, the action attribute specifies which page should handle the form. So in this example, uh, you're actually developing a web form and the content of it is going to be handled by this page. So 
the, uh, and the name of this page is page to handle the form.php. So this is going to become clear in, in follow-up videos, but it's important at this point to know that every form tag needs to have an action attribute. It also needs to have a method attribute. And uh, although there are several values, the most usual is the get or post. And actually most usually, so in most cases, we're going to use the post value for the method attribute. Again, it is a technical issue right now that you shouldn't be uh, too much worried about. It's going to become clear on in uh, follow-up uh, videos. The only thing that you need to know is that the form tag uh, needs to have a method attribute as well. And... Uh, just give it the post value. Finally, as with uh, all tags in, in a web page, it's good to identify them. So for that reason, we have the ID attributes, and that's the identifier for the tag. In this case, uh, the identifier for the form tag is uh, user data. And usually, we also add the name attribute since it's not really necessary. I have omitted it from this example. So in between then the opening form tag and the closing form tag, all of the form fields will be added here. Now about the input tag and more specifically input text. So as you're going to see, the input is a very important uh, tag when it comes to web forms. And, the, uh, and it's necessary always to have the attribute type. Now, as you're going to see, uh, it has many, many values, and you can refer to all of the values on this link. Nevertheless, for this video, we're going to only look at the text, so the input type text and the input type submit. Now, other attributes that you should always use is that of name and ID. So an example is to be seen here where we have the input tag. As you can see, it doesn't have a closing tag, but we just close it uh, right here with uh, the backslash. And uh, the type in this case has a predefined value of text. The type attribute again expects predefined values. And the name and ID can be defined by you since it's uh, this input is about the user's first name. We're going to use uh, the value first name for both name and ID. Now, before we uh, actually code uh, the first example, uh, it's important to mention that all form fields must have the name and preferably the ID attribute. So all ID attributes need to be unique, as this is known in the page. And the name attribute is important to have because it is used for the form server side handling and the ID attribute can be handy for the form's client-side handling. Again, these are two terms that I'm introducing right here, uh, but it's going to become clear in follow-up videos. Moreover, uh, another basic thing for web forms is you need to use the label tag for labeling form fields. And, uh, and there an important attribute is to use the for attribute for linking it to the ID of a form field. And when we speak of form fields, essentially we're uh, uh, discussing about the input tag, the select tag, and text area. But this is a, a basic kind of uh, uh, basic information for web forms that I'm going to repeat also in follow-up videos. And this information is also going to clear up at follow-up videos. I'm just introducing it right here. So now actually we're going to uh, go to code, our first uh, simple example of a web form. And I, I have shifted now to uh, Commodore Edit. That's the web editor that I'm going to use. And I'm going to make a new HTML5 file. And the first thing that I'm going to do is give it a title. I'm going to give it the title of web form. And the second thing that I'm going to do is save it. So as soon as I hit the control save, well, I've made a special um, folder for that. And I'm going to name it as webform.html. Now, as we mentioned, the first tag uh, that you need to have to create a form field, to create a web form, is the form tag. 
And remember that uh, we mentioned that the most important attributes is the action. So we need to specify that. And at this point, I can just uh, give it any name. So I'm going to give it a descriptive name right here. I might change it later on. Uh, the method, which usually we're going to use post and uh, give it an ID just to identify each and every tag. So I'm going to give it the ID user data. Now, uh, what we also mentioned uh, is the tag to be used to receive the user's input is the input tag. So that's it right here. And since it doesn't have a closing tag, it's good practice to actually use this backslash to close it. And the first thing that we need to specify is, as we mentioned, the type. And as you can see, there are several types. But what we want for the time being is type text, since the first our objective is to get the user's uh, first name. As we also mentioned, it's good, it's necessary to have a name tag. So we're going to use something descriptive of his first name, and I'm going to copy and paste that also for the ID. Now, uh, once uh, I save it, and uh, what I'm going to do is uh, see the result into my browser. Actually, this is how the uh, end result will look like. But for the time being, this is uh, the very first basic form uh, in, in which you can receive a, a user's first name. But obviously, this is not really clear to the user. So what we need to do, and what was also mentioned previously, is to add a, a label tag. And so we can label uh, this input and make it uh, user friendly and obviously more descriptive for the user. So I'm going to save after having um, inserted the label tag and I'm just going to refresh the page on the browser. So as you can see here now, this input type text has this label. Actually, to be uh, accurate, as also mentioned uh, previously in the video, <laughs> I need to use the four attributes and copy and paste the same ID so that this label knows that it is linked to this input tag. So the link between a label and an input is done through these two attributes. So by using the same value of the ID attribute of the input tag for the four attributes of the label tag. So simply put, the four attribute of the label needs to have the same value as the ID of the input. And if I save and I move back to the browser and refresh the browser, what you see is going to happen is if I click on the label, what happens is the input uh, gets focus as it's known. So I'm going to uh, repeat this. So as you can see, I click now on the web page. If I click on the label, now I can type immediately my name. Well, as you can see, there is a, a, an important element missing uh, from the from this uh, simple um, a web page, and that's the submit button. Now, in order to have a submit button, we need to use, again, the input tag. It's only now that we need to specify the type as submit. So as you can see in the first case, the input was type of type text. In this case, the input should be of type submit. So I'm just going to save again the HTML file and refresh the page. And as you can see here now, I have this button, which is actually uh, has as a uh, label, as text, if you wish, uh, the, the, the word for then, which is in the Dutch language. 
and in order to change that I need to use the value attribute and and whatever I type in here within the value attribute I saved uh, the file is gonna be seen now in the uh, as text in this uh, button so here now we have the very first example simple example of a of a web form where we have an input type text a label for this input and the submit button now in order to make it a bit prettier i'm also going to add a header so i'm wishing that this is a subscription form for our users so i'm going to give it a heading I'm gonna make sure to have nicely my code indented i'm going to save the page and refresh the page so here you can see now also the header now and one can type his or her name in the field and when one now clicks this button what is going to happen is that uh, the form will instruct the browser to go to this page so let's try that so as you can see here the uh, since this is what it was specified in the action attribute of the form tag the browser actually goes tries to find this web page where well, this page actually does not exist right now and therefore uh, i i don't get uh, to see anything so as you can see now we have created a very simple form uh, nevertheless nothing happens uh, with uh, the data that is inserted so uh, for that uh, we, we we're gonna see uh, how to actually handle the data in a follow-up uh, video so this was uh, the very very uh, first simple example of coding a, a web form now the assignment that I want to give you is to add another field in the form to get the user's last name but I, I'm, I'm actually going to show you the uh, um, solution to the assignment uh, in the following video or one solution as you say of the assignment in the following video now the following video will uh, actually uh, add uh, to the form a single value input known also as radio buttons so the tags uh, that we're gonna review in the following video is uh, again the input tag but now of type radio the, and then we're gonna also expand uh, to the field set and legend tag and as a useful uh, resource for uh, that information is, is this following link but all of that uh, till the next video